the world, the apotheosis of the West Coast spirit is famed fantastic Hollywood. For all its eccentricities, for all its vulgarity and brashness, Hollywood reflects in caricature the uninhibited vitality, the exuberant zest that have made the West Coast what it is. Nowhere do small businessmen ply their trades with more imagination. Nowhere do mystics and cultists find such an enthusiastic following. Nowhere are the bypaths of religious experience explored with such unabashed extravagance. And while the guileless fervor with which Southern California welcomes fads and panaceas may come in part from credulity, back of it are solid Western traits, curiosity, imagination, and a readiness to accept political and economic adventure. The undismayed idealism of Upton Sinclair, California's proponent of utopia, is as much a part of the West Coast character as the aggressiveness of Harry Bridges, who denounces his enemies as scabs and finks, Trotskyites and fascist appeasers. The enterprise and energy which built the Golden West are reflected in the movie industry, which within ten fantastic years rocketed from a shoestring speculation into a multi-million dollar business, and even, when touched by genius, into a great and timeless popular art. <laughs> The movie industry, itself a part of the West's colorful history, has done much to keep this history alive, to memorialize the driving energy and adventurous spirit of the pioneers. In dramatizing the building of the railroad, which first linked the West to the industrial East, the movies have recorded a pivotal era in U.S. history. The huge scale on which the movie industry today functions and the calculated lavishness with which it spends money are in keeping with the Pacific Coast's grandiose tradition. Even in a land where big jobs command big pay, Movie salaries, frequently hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, have become legendary. And to the West Coast, the swift rise of this industry is proof that bigness of concept and boldness of planning are things that pay off. Today, West Coast boosters still dare to hope that their spirit of enterprise will carry them through the purgatory of the post-war transition, that plans which are big enough can somehow succeed. Through rose-colored glasses, they look forward to a post-war world in which their industries will expand to meet the needs of growing markets at home, and even in Russia and the Orient. Among such is the rainbow man of West Coast production, Henry Kaiser, whose confident plans for the future hinge upon his vision of harmony among labor, industry, and government. There is an essential unity between government, industry, and labor, they are not independent and isolated forces. The health and well-being of the commonwealth is their common objective, the core of which is service. The unity of democracy is based on a compromise of equals and mutual self-respect. And we need now to emphasize the harmony rather than the difference. At the end of the war with Japan, all America must face with realism the West Coast question. For the energy and imagination of the 12 million dynamic inhabitants of the Pacific Coast 
have not yet provided an adequate solution for the problems of this vast region. Problems which post-war conditions might even render tragic for the nation as a whole. Time marches on.